Hello, St. Joe grade school. It's Mrs. Swayze here. Hope you didn't forget me. I certainly didn't forget you. Today I'm here to do a little virtual art lesson with you. And if we were in school right now, we'd be talking about the two art pieces over my shoulder. Fourth grade, we'd be visiting Paul Clay and his Castle in the Sun painting. This was done in about the early 1900s, about 1920s. And he was a type of painter known as an expressionist painter. So he tried to evoke different feelings in the viewers and tried to also put his own emotion into his paintings. So if you look at his painting, for me, I get a little kind of nervous. That sun right in the center looks like a blazing hot fireball. I don't know if it's ready to set. I don't know if the day is just getting started, but I love this piece for all its colors and obvious shapes. I'm curious what Paul Clay's emotion was when he was painting this. Another abstract expressionist painter that we would also be looking at in fifth grade would be one of my favorites, Georgia O'Keeffe. We'd be doing those in large um, flower projects. Here's the thing, those are one of my favorites, so we will still do that when I see you next year in sixth grade. I wanna kick off the year with a bang, and we're gonna go big. We're gonna go big with our big Georgia O'Keeffe unit. But one of the things we'd focus on are the different color schemes that she uses in her paintings. For example, this one on the left is a very dominant warm color scheme. Hopefully you remember those warm colors. Red, orange, yellow. And then on the right is a cool color scheme where you see a lot of blues and purples here, not so much green, but that's our third cool color that we always talk about. We'd also be talking about analogous color schemes. On the color wheel, those are colors that are next to each other. So for example, well, red, yellow, and blue, or red, yellow, and orange are next to each other on the color wheel, so they fit well together. So does um, red, orange, orange, and red, and so on. But let's get to making art. Here are the supplies you're going to need today. I have all of my markers here, but you'll only need a few, depending on what color scheme you're going to use. You need some black paint. I just happen to have my little craft paints at home. Um, if you have tempera paint, this is acrylic paint. Either one is fine. Look around the house for some scrap cardboard. See if you can cut something up. This first piece is about as big as three of my fingers. The second piece, only about one or two. You want different widths. And finally, I have a Sharpie here. You could use a black pen. And then look for either a white crayon or maybe a white paint marker. Um, that's gonna come for our detail work in the end. And what we're gonna be creating today is one of my favorites. We're gonna create a castle using our drag technique. If you've been with me since kindergarten, we've used cardboard to paint before but maybe not in this fashion. So we can start with our background. If you notice here, this is my warm color scheme. I also threw in some pink. I also threw in some pink when I was drawing my background. You could also go for more of a starry night mode and use your cool colors. I threw in a lavender color that I happened to find in the marker box. And what you're doing is just drawing side to side. So I'm gonna create one with you right now. And I'll go back and create a warm color one. But I was thinking what, as I did these two, that was kind of boring. I could probably spice things up a bit. So even if I do warm colors, I don't have to go straight across. I can create my lines again, side to side but they don't need to be stick straight. There's just kind of maybe different personalities that like it a little bit more organized. And you can feel free to do either one. Worst case scenario, you don't like the way it turns out, flip your paper over. Oh, I should have mentioned you need a piece of white paper. That's the whole point of where we're doing our project. It can be any kind of paper. I just happen to have this weird size shape around the house. This one's 11 by 14, but you could use computer paper, you could use half of a computer paper, you could use line paper, you can use a piece of cardboard, you could use the inside of a cereal box. 
anything you happen to have lying around, guys. Don't stress about it. Don't stress about it. This should be kind of relaxing. I'm kind of already getting tired just doing this because it's so hypnotizing. Remember to use the fat side of your marker when we're making our fat lines. Nice, thick patterns all the way through. I'm not being super precise, am I? I'm just trying to fill in my spaces as I go. Because a lot of this is gonna be painted over anyways. And I'm down to my red. I can tell I'm gonna have to go back and revisit one of my colors if I don't get all of this filled up with red. Now, something I want you to think about is why we don't use warm and cool together here. You could, but you'd really have to think about it because if I put purple down next to this yellow, I would have a muddy sky. If you remember those complementary colors, do not mix well together. I'm going just almost to the edge of my page. Again, not super precise. Don't stress about it. I see one little pocket down here I'm gonna add some yellow to. And I'm not even sure right now what's the top and what's the bottom of my page. I'm gonna decide that in a minute. Okay, once you are happy with your kind of starry night background, I guess we should have talked about that painting too, guys. Sorry about that. I'm gonna decide what's the top, what's the bottom. My castle's going to grow from the side. So if you can come around my shoulder, Ava, and then I'll demonstrate. So now you want your black paint ready and your two pieces of cardboard. You definitely want something underneath your workspace so that you don't uh, get acrylic paint, if that is your choice, along the bottom. So I'm just gonna drag a quick line of black paint close to the bottom, but not at the bottom. And from here is where the drag word comes in. I'm gonna start with my big piece, actually. I'm gonna start at the line and drag up. Drag up. You can see right there, there's a little fold in the um, cardboard, so that's giving me that certain impression. So maybe if I command that cardboard a little bit more, I could drag it sideways. I don't want to take all of my black line up because I want to use this guy and get some smaller towers in there. You can leave some openings. Maybe that's a little um, escape route in the castle. And then again, add some more towers at the top. Just by turning your cardboard, you are in charge. You can also take the very end of your cardboard, get some paint on there, and stamp. I think this is where the coolest part of the castle comes in. Creating kind of even tinier towers at the tops. I can also turn my cardboard piece sideways and create some walkways, maybe some bridges that cross from one tower to the next just picking up that texture inside my cardboard even looks awesome. So I could go on and on and on with this, but hopefully it's a nice day out and you wanna create art and get outside. So I'm gonna just drag out some of my black paint at the bottom here. Make it look maybe a little rocky. You'll notice that you can see some of your background through there. I mean, for me, it doesn't bother me, but if it does bother you, just pull it back up. See if you can cover it up just a little bit more, if that bothers you. So once you've built your castle by dragging your cardboard piece, your cardboard pieces are done. You don't really need those anymore. The next thing you wanna grab are kind of your finishing touches. And that would be Sharpie, crayon, and if you happen to have a paint marker. 
So I want to show you just on my dried sample while these, while this example or this piece I'm working on dries a little bit longer, some of the things I added. So with my Sharpie, I went in and added a little bit more to the entrance, to the um, iron gate there. I added some itty bitty flags, some little crosses on top of the spires there. I'm really setting this castle silhouette, setting it apart from just, uh, that looks like drag paint on a paper. So adding these little details, again, is so addicting to me. Like, I really wanna add maybe some stick guards at the top here that are walking, that are do looking out from the top. Um, maybe Rapunzel's hair is coming down from her in her tower. Again, just a little dainty detail at the top makes all the difference. So going back to the one that we just created together, remember you can tell the paint is wet if it's shiny. So watch where your drawing hand goes and using your white crayon or white paint marker, very teensy windows. Because this castle is not very detailed because it does appear to be far away, we don't have a lot of detail work. We can't see any crossbars in our windows. We can't tell if anybody's inside. But you might need to actually turn your paper so that your drawing hand, in my case, my right hand, doesn't go through the wet paint. love the way the white pops. And when you're done with the white, I would obviously add way more there. When you're done with the white, switch to your black. See? Ugh. Switch to your black and add some details. So this might be a good time, guys, before you start adding details to go get a snack, help your mom with the dishes, go ahead and take the trash out for dad, then come back and add your details. To add a flag, I'm going pull sideways. Let me do one more. Pull, almost like a, like a two. But of course you can make up your own flags because it's your castle. So that's as far as I'm gonna take you there. Feel free to use whatever color backgrounds you like your warm colors, your cool color combinations, or even check out analogous colors, those colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. When you are finished with your castle, take a pic, upload it in Google Classroom. I can't wait to see it. Stay safe, keep creating.